There we go. Me and Xavier talk a lot about cybersecurity. A whole lot. A whole lot. <laughs> and uh, we want to talk about some of the actionable, the results of some of it. So as you know, during the day when we're not goofing off making YouTube videos and sharing how they got hack stories and all that fun stuff, he actually has his fingers on the keyboard well, digging into and finding security vulnerabilities, assessing them, going through and auditing networks. And he's audited networks at a lot of big companies, and we have to remain unnamed. But we have a treat for you. He has a report, and this is a report he made from one of those audits. Uh, some names were changed to protect the innocent. And honestly, this is what you want. You want an Xavier to break your applications, poke on your network. Find out what you had at default passwords. Because there's one of those things where you go, oh, I secured everything. Well, is it? Until you've audited it, until a third party, not the person that locked the door, that someone came back and checked to make sure the lock was secure. That's a standard practice. And, well, maybe not so standard practice, but it should be standard <laughs> practice. Should be standard yeah. Practice. And that's what he does. He goes through an assessment. And we figured instead of talking about all the nuts and bolts, we'll talk a little bit about the tools he used to come up with the assessment. But we want to show you the results and what an assessment looks like and this can be very enlightening and like i said you really want someone like xavier uh going through and doing it because trust me this is the same thing if someone gets in your network they're going to do simulation yeah they're simulating it on his side way better than uh them finding out and whoever them or they are if they're in your network uh they will do all these things so he's this is why you kind of have to have a, a lot of real world kind of hacking experience you kind of have to have that no, I don't want to say foot in both worlds, but it, it's kind of running the edge. You have to understand how the hackers are doing it, what tools they're using. So we're using a lot of the same techniques, tools uh, to produce these reports. These are the same things that they're going to come in your network. They're going to start knocking things down and going through. Uh, but that's where we're going to start, and we're going to jump over here to uh, the report and kind of walk you through what an assessment looks like in the end. And like I said, this is uh, this is all essentially, we like I said, we changed names of applications and things like that. So it took a lot of editing to uh bring you this but this is really what it looks like this is not fake so yep. so this is an example of a security penetration test for an HIE portal HIE being health information exchange um, so I would you know have my logo here enterprise offensive security go check out enterprise offensive security.com if you want to actually download the sample report um, and we would have your logo and who is prepared for the date in which it's prepared and who it's presented to um, one thing you'll notice is it has a version number and uh, the reason why it has a version number is because we actually will work with you over a period of time to come up with a multitude of versions uh, of this report so that it's the most effective for you. Um, of course, we always leave every engagement off with let, or the report off with letting uh, the reader know and uh, uh, the amount of confidentiality that should be taken into account for this document. So. Um, you need to follow a certain um, need-to-know basis yeah. protocol when it comes to sharing these reports. Um, and then it comes with a number of disclaimers. And this is important because when we come in here, we're going to find flaws. There's always something that's going to be found uh, when this audit's done. And that's why you have to find someone you can trust. You have to go, hey, um, these guys aren't going to disclose this to the wrong people. And and I don't just mean hackers. You're, when you deal with some of the larger companies that we deal with, uh, the concern is, are you going to tell our shareholders about this? Like, they will be concerned, or our venture capital um and this is why we have to understand all parties involved. And sometimes you get hired third party, and sometimes even the investors may hire to do it. Because uh, we have to figure out who the audience is. But these are real important. Is whoever hired us, that's who the confidentiality agreement is going to be with. And this is a Correct. important process in Correct. this. It's extremely important yeah. to get the confidentiality. We right. have to know. We have to know who we're working for and who gets this results and who can or cannot be told. And that's part of the pre-engagement. Um, just letting you know, that's a big piece of this. Yes, that's certainly um, and then we'll get into the table of contents, right? And uh, a part of the table of contents, you'll find the purpose, scope, summary of findings, and a conclusion. Uh, and this is about as simple as it can get. Um, so we lead off with the purpose. The, uh, this this is a fiction uh, fictional ABC uh, Health Company. ABC <laughs> Health Company here. Uh, they've asked us, Enterprise Offensive Security, to go ahead and perform a detailed security examination. Um, it's a custom implementation of a portal. Um, we we go ahead and let uh, let it be known at what time the actual testing took place, 
And then uh, we get down into the scope where we talk about exactly which levels of access exist, uh, what group membership should be uh, associated with that access level, um, and then the actual application and the, uh, the URI for the application in which we're uh, doing a penetration test for. Um, we'll put down important notes if there's anything that we need to bring to the reader's attention. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the time, you have to understand that as a tester, you're not the person that's actually going to go present the results most of the time, unless you're like me and you do a little bit of both, right, where you're in front of the client and you're behind the keyboard. Um, the majority of the time, your testers won't actually go see the client. So in the event that uh, the tester wants to be able to get a, a complete thought through before or sort of a disclaimer, um, that that's basically what we would do and then we get directly into the summary of findings, right? We, we don't BS around the yeah. idea is um, This is your only opportunity to be able to communicate effectively for your team Exactly what it is that they need to be doing. So we uh, we break out the summary of findings based on the risk rating Right, so this table down here is something that we will put together with our uh, testing categories and the, the three uh, levels of severity. Sometimes it could be up to five levels, but for simplicity's sake, we like to use three. Um, and, you know, just a, a, a testing, uh, a bit of our categories for testing. Um, one thing you'll notice is this is a web application pen test, so our network penetration test will be a little bit different. Our Wi-Fi penetration test will be a little bit different. These are things that we offer, uh, but this is the, the, uh, the manner in which we communicate those um, deficiencies in your environment. So as you can see here, we have uh, a couple of highs, a couple of mediums, and a low. Yeah, and bypassing client validation obviously is really big. And just to roll back a little bit, this is a uh, engagement there. The All the teams are involved, and everybody knows. This is not like a blind red team test where someone at the very highest level hired us covertly to go in. Uh, this is one of those... We get a lot of information. That's how we know levels of access. We don't have to try a fish it completely from the outside. Right. So you're starting with a lot, but that's 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 type of test. That's the results of that. And right. this is the first one you want to do. Later, after you've closed all these, is when you want that blind red team test. Precisely. And I think uh, it's super important to talk about compliance and the compliance regimes that be. Um, to keep compliance, you often will need to do one or one or two things, a vulnerability assessment and a penetration test. What I'm displaying to you today is an actual penetration test. So we use manual techniques and procedures to actually go um, and, and execute out on these exploits and these vulnerabilities, whereas like a vulnerability scan would be more going to your network from the outside and or inside, looking at all of the endpoints, uh, doing a fingerprint from the outside and actually seeing what services could be used and leverage um, for, for vulnerabilities, as well as scanning your repositories and the libraries that you use for deficiencies and vulnerabilities in your packages that you're using. Um, but the, the very first thing we found here was, uh, you know, we went through website pilfering. Uh, and this is basically when we get into the meat of the report, uh, we go through and we talk about the different type of attacks that we would do. And in this case, there was none found. Uh, then we go over into, well, of course, we give a conclusion, which is basically letting us, le letting the, the uh, this is our executive summary, yeah. so to speak. Uh, if this is our too long didn't read. Uh, yeah. What was the conclusion? Okay, they did full text searches and crawl results. Okay, cool. They didn't reveal anything. And this may be presented in two different levels. So we're going to talk to maybe an application development team because they want to know the details. And then a management above them is going to go just look for the conclusions and summarize it. So this is going right. to be uh, presented and pivoted in different ways depending on the audience. The people at the top, they go, how bad is it? And the application people go, how do we fix it in detail? Precisely. And how do I actually replicate this inside right. of my own environment so that I can learn from it? Right. Uh, a lot of what we find is that developers will actually read these reports and start to learn how to think like a hacker. And that's that's literally ideal. That's, that's huge. what we want. Um, so we went down and we did a little bit of file guessing attacks. We went through and did some modifying input choices and uh, parameter tapping, tampering, which is uh, very, very fun to do and is uh, prolific. Uh, the, the findings that you'll find often uh, inside of web applications where you're tricking the application into thinking you're um, someone that you're not or uh, right. by you know changing a parameter uh, to be able to move laterally throughout the application, yeah. elevate privileges, et cetera. And the tool we use for that is? Burp Suite. Yeah. Burp Suite will really do uh, some interesting things. It's so much in there. You can start just pushing so much. And you can't, what you're doing is you're getting in between and doing things that are completely unexpected to the application, sending it weird data, sending it things. And Burp Suite, um, there's plenty of videos you can find on it. Uh, 
we maybe we'll do a video on it one day and kind of show it in action as well. But but what we're just going to do is going to sit between the website and my browser, and it kind of it, it fits that little middle between. And we're like send something random that that was not expected to send, and that's what we're doing here, really pushing the limit to see if the application will do that. And it's funny because you get pushback from some devs. Well, I would never expect that input. Well, you didn't sanitize for it, and trust me, Precisely. someone who's wanted to poke at and find holes, they're doing this. They're going to use this. Burp Suite is pretty standard hacker tool. It's the part of the Swiss Army kit for web application testing. Precisely. And then after we actually use that tool and we identify the issue, we go ahead and we'll use CVSS to uh, map out uh, the risk versus the complexity and um, explain that to our customer and then give them a summary of exactly what we did to do this test um, and how to actually uh, retest for this uh, particular use case, as well as any uh, uh, screenshots that we'll need to actually uh, pass along. Yeah, because the goal of this is not to say, ha-ha, we broke your app at all. That's There's a misconception sometimes, and there's sometimes people a little chip on their shoulder like that. Our goal is to go, this is how we do it. This is how we repeat the process. This is the string we sent to get this result, or sometimes a series of strings you send. If you Correct. do this, it fills up this buffer, and then we send this command, and then it dumps. Uh, so we go through the process to make sure it's repeatable. We do have to do that on our end beforehand, and then the documentation uh, is given to the app team, because the goal is, here's how you guys Here's the this, this parameters you use. Fix your code on the back end until that doesn't happen no more. It's, it's, the goal is all remediation here. Exactly. And so we also give our recommended resolution, which is always one of our favorite parts for us to be able to get in and put the, put the blue team hat on and think about how would we defend against this? What's the proper way that this functionality should be executed out or implemented in? Um, and then, of course, we give a conclusion. So uh, a constant is always, you know, if we do find something, we try and do a resolution, and we always try and have a conclusion. Um, so we went ahead and did a test for bypassing client-side validation, um, and we're able to find another uh, issue for data birth validation for pa uh, patient, patient, patient search. Patient uh, search. I'm a uh, math guy, not an English guy. <laughs> I love to read, though. So, yeah. Uh, I would love to read your code. Please let me know if you would like me to do a code review for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, we, we go ahead, and now you'll start to see the pattern of uh, our risk versus complexity. And, you know, your risk appetite in certain environments may be at different levels, and that's the reason why we break this down to a high, medium, low uh, risk type of um, uh, way so that you're able to say, hey, this is a low, um, I'm not really looking at this right now as far as the risk, or you're looking at complexity and going, hey, this is, you know, in, in this case, it's risk high, complexity low, which means uh, you, you don't even need to, um, you know, be authenticated. You just need to be the man in the mi middle, yeah. right, which is, you know, often outside of the control of the operator of the web app. And, and that's something we're, we're looking for is that in between because you started with an encrypted session, but is there a way to uh, drop it back? That's one right. of the tests. And it's one of those simply overlooked things when you configure web servers, leaving for compatibility reasons, uh, old ciphers in there, and doing downgrade attacks. That's yep. one of the tests. And sometimes you find that, we oh yeah, we authenticated, but we realize we can get your user's uh, stuff because we can downgrade it after it's authenticated and get to the bypass. Precisely. Um, so yeah, this uh, uh, complementing screenshots, um, examples. Oh, excuse me, I moved a little bit too fast. Complementing screenshots and examples. Um, moving down to more screenshots and examples, more details, and our recommended resolution. And again, you'll start to see the pattern. These are mm -hmm. the ways that we do it, right? So we'll go through. We have a long list of checklists. When you work with us, um, we actually will have a base template in which we do these uh, these penetration tests with and then we work with you to find exactly what are your most important parts of your business and then we tailor our attack and our and our tools and techniques around trying to be able to get to those uh those uh crown assets jewels. That, yeah the, the important assets that you hopefully are protected on that right um also like uh you know there's often a time in which architecture has to find certain things for a reason um, such as character limits. And this was something that we found here, even though it's a low risk level, um, but there's a low complexity. So this allows uh, for a potential attacker to come through and do a denial of service and consume all of your resources. Um, so and we he, go ahead and do a, a summary, details, and recommended resolution. Yeah, because this is another side of it. Um, it says even though they may not get in, denial of service, especially if you're some type of public-facing uh, portal that you know, you're know you either retail or B2B, people being able to shut down your portal by just filling up one form with some data and hitting send a couple times, 
that that's still that's bad. Yeah, it's bad. It's another aspect. Of I the mean, testing. competitors could be doing that now. Oh, they yeah. found this weakness. Um, you may be do, running some advertisement. It could be Super Bowl Sunday, and now they've taken down your entire yeah. you know onboarding, and you know you could have potential customers, and but you're going under denial of service, and it's not volumetric, and it's it's an application flaw, and you don't have a way to mitigate that immediately. And, and there's definitely some competitiveness in the market. Uh, Precisely. Spend a few minutes reading. I know they've improved, but like Uber, you know, they did certainly f- exploit anything they could find in Lyft to uh, slow their system down. Yep. So that it's, yeah, that happens It's a, when it's competitive markets, but you want to do that testing before your Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> exactly. And so uh, one of the things that I love most about testing is sometimes you run into things that just were done right. Um, and that's, like my favorite thing, especially on a retest. If I come through and I hit a few things and I retest you and you don't have any of that, I'm always excited. But even when I go the first time, at any time I can say, hey, there was no way for us to be able to leverage hidden hidden fields, right? That's always fun. Um, Cookie abuse, this is really, really big. Yeah. Uh, You know, just being on a network network with someone and being able to uh, be the man in the middle and grab those cookies that are flying over the wire. If you aren't invalidating, if you're using them for sessions, um, this basically can allow uh, for an attacker to take over the identity of or the, the session of another user that has a legitimate credential. And that credential could be a DevOps credential or a senior engineer credential, yeah. something that's overpowered that allows them to be able to, you know, give themselves unlimited, uh, further unlimited powers. So uh, cookie abuse is really, really big. One of the things I like to tell people to do is set the secure flags on their cookies. Um, and that's basically what you'll you'll see right here. Yeah, it's those little things, but a lot of times uh, developers, because they're focusing on front end experience, uh, user flow, and they may go, I'm just gonna use this framework. Well, if they leave the default or they're not as familiar with that framework, the default may not have secure flag and cookies. And that's how these little mistakes are made, and that's why you need a third party, because they're going, well, the default should have secure, right? Mm-hmm. That's why you need these tests to make sure that's right. And another thing is, is even, uh, even you know, sometimes if you handle cookies properly, there can still be session hijacking due to uh, not enough entropy in the way that you actually issue those cookies, so they could be guessed. Um, so this is one of those tests that we run using Burp, and uh, you know, we're often able to find uh, ways for us to. Just generate, generate the cookie. A cookie that will allow us to uh, not enough digits, and you and the, how that happens is you go well. You know we're B two B, we're a healthcare. Uh, we'll never have more than like uh, two hundred clients on this. Right. Well, cool. So you think you a thousand would be enough entropy? You know what I mean? Right. Some some go small like that because they're not thinking like scalability. But that of course opens up to this type of attack. They're like, right. oh yeah, adding a couple of zeros, even and, though and, we're not going to be. And, lu- <laughs> and luckily, this client actually stood up against this uh, this attack. Um, so that's yeah, that's always they passed good. it. They past this one so um even though sometimes you may see a lot of charts big pictures uh that could just be our way of proving to you and showing to you the effectiveness of our testing and giving you that validation of your hardening um even if you did pass yeah and we're happy when the conclusion is you passed great job pat on the back that's that's great too (laughs) it's good to know so uh url jumping they also passed um cross-site scripting they also passed um, and of course, directory browsing. This is one of the easier ones that people get right. Um, the proper HT access, proper they file do permissions. Now. <laughs> it's it's not as prevalent as it used it to be. It was so much fun for so many years. <laughs> <laughs> My misspent youth. <laughs> there you go. Reading files on directories that were not meant to be read, like configuration files. Right. Um, a lot of web applications will have a config.php, a config.aspx, and will be you know a, or or a war or a jar that sits on the root that's actually run by Tomcat. Um, and sometimes you're able to get your hands on those credentials or those packages and start to learn how to move further in the environment or get access to, to things that you otherwise wouldn't have had access. So yeah. directory browsing is always fun. Yeah, and, and sometimes people think because they hid the directory that there's like, oh, we hid it. But one of the examples is going to be WordPress. There's a couple of different WordPress backup plugins that create a common file naming structure. Mm-hmm. Now, even if you block access to it, if you know the URL, I was actually kind of surprised at some of these. I think that one is gone. It was one of the backup ones. But because they had a common naming structure, you could just guess if a company was using it and grab their WordPress backup and mm-hmm. then have their passwords. There you go. So there's definitely things like that. And, you know, sometimes developers are busy or under the gun, uh, they're pressured, and they go, I'm just going to back it up over here. Security. It didn't work unless I put 777 on it. Right. Yeah. So those are those things we want to be tested for, and some of the file guessing uh, do it. So it's all a valid test, even though it's not 
That's it doesn't happen as often, um, well, at least with the application. Well, I mean, yeah. now, now it's all about open S3 buckets. That's oh, the yeah. Effect. It's basically they've moved the ball over to uh, S3. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> and, man, those are being discovered all the time. That's a whole different <laughs> That's a whole game, right? That's a different topic. That's another. That's cloud security from enterprise offensive security. Yeah, we'll do another report on that <laughs> one. <laughs> so a SQL injection is another fun one. This uh, could lead to people being um, on a, a, a misuse of authentication, so being able to elevate privileges from unauthenticated to authenticated it, as well as uh, dumping of files to actually, uh, dumping of database to actually get um, records for, for of your patients, of your customers, um, for competitive advantages, for just defamation, for anything. Um, so SQL injection is always a big one that we test for. We test for in multiple ways, using a multitude of tools, including SQL map and our favorite Burp. Um, this this client tested clean for it, which is which is good, always good. good. Um, but they didn't test clean for some logical design issues, and this is what we were talking more about earlier with that um, uh, code review. Uh, sometimes. Uh, if, if a client will give us access to their code before even testing it, we'll be able to see ways in which uh, our entry and exit will be uh, available, right? And so one way, um, uh, one way that uh, th their logical um, design was incorrect was they didn't allow for uh, passwords, they didn't force passwords to be set um, when setting an email. Yeah. Right. So you're uh, basically allowing someone to be able to potentially take over a legitimate user's account because they're not uh, validating the password um, that's associated with that account when they actually change the account, right? Okay. So I'm already logged in and then I go to go change my account to your password, I mean to your email using no password at all and uh, now all of a sudden I become your user. Um, you have to test for those ty types it's of things. It's part of the breaking it in unexpected ways. That's right. what we're going to do is, you know, the developers really focus on, all right, this is the way the user flows through. They're thinking about that. We're thinking of a way we can reverse it and, you know, swap an email and pull something over. And it's, it's one of those little things. We are trying to break that flow that the people created because this is that thinking like a hacker. Exactly. And so we give our recommended resolution. Um, and we give our conclusion, right? And then we talk about system and software vulnerabilities. This goes back to like the, that vulnerability scan topic. Uh, that kind of is inherently done during a penetration test because it's a part of our information and data that we gather for further uh, exploitation. So anything that we run across, any systems or softwares that are vulnerable, old, need patching, we always bring those up. Um, in this case, it was a Yahoo library, YUI, um, which, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that goes to show how old this <laughs> this test is. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a while. Um, so we also talk about uh, secure attributes not being set on cookies. That's what I talked about earlier. Uh, passing the secure flag. Um, yeah, and uh, then we we will wrap it up with the conclusion where we'll remind you exactly of the risk rating um, and the page reference where you can find the six issues that we had found, um, and we'll do a whole entire conclusion and let you know um, exactly you know. What, what what we found, what you guys did good, what you guys did bad, what we uh what we expect to to see moving forward, mm -hmm. um and usually we'll sit down with a uh, a CISO or a development team sometimes and we'll just have a couple of coffees, bring some snacks, work through everything, find where this stuff is happening in the code base, or think about when this mistake was made, plan it out, and then set time for a retest. And once we retest, hopefully this stuff isn't present again and they get the bill of clean health. And, you know, in the event that it's, uh, we're there for a compliance reason, such as FedRAMP or HIPAA uh, or, or uh, PCI DSS compliance, uh, we'll see you in a year. And hopefully you're, you're still clean. Yeah, and this is why the versions are important. You know, the first thing we're going to do is hit the same things again. Did you fix them? You can say you fixed them, but we're going to run and test them. Oh, yeah. Even though we gave you all the tools to do it yourself, we need to know, did you do it? Were they implemented? And this is usually you're not the one hiring us if you're the developer. It's the C-levels that are hiring, but this is one of those things. And there's auditors and compliance or investors, again, that want to know, all right, this is the short summary of version 1. How does version 1.1 look? 1.2, version 2.0, what app changes are made? Um, and the assessment starts over. But this is an important aspect of it. And like I said, this is for an application testing that was for a medical client. Yep. A little bit older uh, report, but, you know, we're tight. Very, very relevant. Yeah. We're tight to the best of, trust me, we do not, uh, confidentiality is of the utmost. That's one of those very things. Important. When I do these, uh, even when I do some of the implementation or IT assessments that we do, I, I can't talk about the clients. They're, it's just, I would not have those 
some of those gigs if I talked. Right. Type thing. And I mean, but, I'm doing pen test literally every single day. Um, and it was even hard to find a report that I could even anonymize. Uh, so yeah, Because they just become your, a blur. <laughs> we take your privacy extremely seriously. Yeah. Um, me and Tom have been working on this report for like four days. So uh, to, it's to just not, redact, it's, redact, just redact. Just redact it all, right? <laughs> just to make sure that we didn't get ourselves any 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 trouble. Um, so this report, this sample report, is actually up for download right now. If mm -hmm. you go to enterpriseoffensivesecurity.com. We'll leave a link down below where you can uh, get this and yep. check out the services and things like that that Xavier offers. Uh, but this is, you know, this is where all this knowledge we have. This is how we understand when we do these how they got hacked videos and we like talking about it we want to raise awareness for it you know that's a big piece of this is you can do a lot of yourself we're using burp suite you can do some of this testing mm -hmm. and matter of fact do that before you ever call for an audit that's how you'll get past cleaning you know you'll you'll scream through this audit go now this was a lot easier because you tested with burp seat you tested with that and there's some great youtube channels out there and i can leave a couple links out there that show you how to use some of these tools yep. i know there's been some questions about youtube whether or not they want us doing those videos about those i tools. mean but i'll say this: yeah. a good in-map scan mm -hmm. um enumerate you know, the network figure out what's just, on it just knowing what's on the network is a really really good start um, a vulnerability s assessment, something like a scan, uh, like a Nessus scan, a Qualys scan. Uh, these things open are uh, open vast. They're extremely valuable uh, before you ever even pick up the phone to, to give us a call. And we actually have a white paper that we're working on right now that actually goes into the differences between a vulnerability assessment and a penetration test because they are different. So yeah. um, you do have opportunities to do vulnerability assessments in a much lightweight and easier fashion than going through a full penetration test. And again, that penetration test is on the way to a full red team engagement. And the best part, if, you, if you're a new company starting out, start there. You, you know, new company starting out, you don't have money to uh, pay for an audit. But if you start thinking about these things ahead of time and start testing this, and you have Kali Linux, you've got Parrot OS. Uh, I'm partial to the Parrot one because I think it comes a little bit more completely set up. He Me likes too. it as well. I like um, Open VAS is in there. You can, this is no charge, free. You free. can go download that Open software. Source. Start poking away at it, and uh, then when you start building your app, you, you've started from the ground up. A lot of times when we're doing assessments or companies that didn't start from the ground up, they started running with an idea, maybe some investment money, and then they call us. But whichever way you're starting, you know, this is the important part is start thinking more secure. These applications that are going to be public facing, you have to get that mentality out there. And that's a lot of what we're preaching here. Is, and this is trust, and this is yeah. your customers, and this is your digital relationship with your customers. And uh, you know, it's super important to keep your reputation, your, your digital reputation secure. You don't want to be in an episode of How They Got Hacked. No, Maybe no. as a guest, but certainly not as a victim. <laughs> not as a victim. <laughs> not no as a victim. So like I said, we'll leave a link to uh, the security and all the stuff that we do and where to get a hold of Xavier and how you go through the process. And, of course, this assessment will be on there. I'll leave it in the description below. And thanks. Thank you. All right. Peace. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below, which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.